Welcome back to the State Champs Signing Day Special. I'm Ryan Terpstra, and it is that point in the show where I actually have to put a referee jersey on. Yes, guys, I am that corny. Not but <laughs> it is the great debate between Michigan and Michigan State where we get the big boys into the center of the ring, and we talk about this year's recruiting classes representing Michigan. Sam Webb, our friend from Scout.com, and then also Rico Beard from Spartan Mag. And uh, Rico, let's start talking about State just coming off of a college football playoff appearance. Right. How's the momentum been going in East Lansing? I mean, the momentum is pretty good. They just got to decide who's going to be the starting quarterback between Tyler O'Connor and Damian Terry. Are they going to platoon it the way they did at the Ohio State game? But uh, looking at Mark D'Antonio's uh, past history with quarterbacks, I don't think there's that big of a thing. He's put Brian Hoyer in the league. He's put Kirk Cousins. He's about to put Connor Cook. So I think he'll pick the right guy, and they'll keep the, they'll keep the party going. Now on the Michigan side of things, Sam finished with a big bowl win over mm -hmm. Florida and also Jim Harbaugh's first full class. What are you seeing so far this offseason? Yeah, I think uh, Michigan is riding some great momentum into the offseason. They have some uncertainty at quarterback, but you have the quarterback whisperer as your head football coach. So it almost really doesn't matter. A lot of people think it's gonna be O'Corn, but uh, John O'Corn, but I think uh, whoever they put back there a quarterback, Michigan expects to pick up right where they left off. Well, let's talk about some guys already in the respective classes, the early enrollees. There's a lot on both sides. And uh, for Michigan State, Rico, a guy right here from in the state of Michigan, Donnie Corley's the headliner who's already on campus. Yeah, Donnie Corley uh, committed at the Army All-American game, and I look for him to be playing immediately. May even see a little bit on both sides of the ball. I mean, if you saw the state championship game when King won, he got the game-winning touchdown. I mean, 59 receptions, uh, 16 touchdowns, 1,400 yards, plus he had 90 tackles, 10 uh, interceptions on defense. So Donnie is definitely going to see some action early, along with Cam Chambers, the other wide receiver who played in the Army All-American game. We've seen a few guys make it to Ann Arbor that could be in the mix. Sam, who are some names for us to watch for? Well, you certainly got to start with Kareem Walker, uh, the, uh, the five-star running back from DePaul Catholic in Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, you know, Michigan uh, was running back by committee last year. No one really solidified, no, really, no one really locked down that position. So as an early enrollee, getting a chance to go through spring ball is really going to help him. He's not a speed burner, really tough, physical back, a one cut and go guy, between the tackles guy. He can go the distance from 50 or 60. All right, guys, this is the point in the segment where we get into a little bit of a debate because both schools have early enrollee quarterbacks and Messiah DeWeaver was at one point a Michigan commit. Now he's in East Lansing, Rico. Tell us why he is such a great get for Mark D'Antoni. Well, you know, Messiah DeWeaver, I guess, was ahead of the curve. He, he left before the scholarship got pulled. <laughs> But he comes to Michigan State, and you're looking at a kid who over his career thrown for like 7,600 yards, 90 touchdowns, 49-9 and nine career record. Uh, the beauty of Messiah is he's going to be able to sit. I don't – if you – I say, if you see Messiah DeWeaver his freshman year, some things went really wrong at East Lansing because the quarterback's ahead of him. They want to get him bigger. They want to get him stronger to be able to take the pounding of the Big Ten. So you'll probably see him uh, maybe next year competing for that starting job or the backup job. But for this season, he is coming in early to learn the playbook, but I think they're going to try to stash him away and save him and break him out starting next season. Now, Sam, Michigan didn't wait long to fill that quarterback spot. Give us the rundown on Brandon Peters' game and why they like him. Yeah, well, you know, I think Harbaugh was feeling a little charitable, so he kind of gave his cast off to Mark D'Antonio over there. And then he went and got the quarterback that he wanted, and that was Brandon Peters, you know, a guy that when you watch him, has that mobility that you want, but also the, the arm strength. And I think when you, because when you, Masai DeWeaver is a good quarterback, I think when you compare the two, what Harbaugh saw that he liked more with Brandon Peters was the arm strength. Now, Michigan State has done a good job, Rico, of getting guys in the state of Michigan to come in and play. In fact, one of our uh, football, Mr. Football finalists, Tristan Jackson, is part of this class. Tell us a little bit about some of the guys from Michigan that Mark D'Antonio is recruiting. Well, uh, Mark D'Antonio has brought in four, I call them super wide receivers. I mean, four four-star kids, Donnie Corley. Tristan Jackson is one from uh, West Bloomfield. Uh, you also got uh, Justin Lane and Cam Chambers. Probably of those four, Three will see the field, one will sit. Now, unfortunately, Tristan and Justin Lane are going to be coming in in the summertime, so we're going to see. But Tristan, I, I like, he, in the end, may be the best of all the receivers. He really, he, he played more of the quarterback in high school, but I think once he locks down and just becomes a wide receiver and really learns how to run routes and do all those things, 
He is going to be really good. He's going to, he's a guy that I think is going to pay off major dividends come year three, four, and five. Demetrius Vance is a guy that from Cast Tech, he's going to play immediately. I don't see a red shirt on him. I think the biggest compliment I got is when the King coaches pulled me aside and said, you seen that number eight over there? That's an NFL player. That's a pro player. He's got speed, but he, man, he could light somebody up coming across the middle. His tackling ability is, is right there. He is a strong safety in the making. I, I really like everything about him. Brandon Randall was a guy that D'Antonio found, and everybody was like, who is this guy that just committed? And then his stock blew up. He played in the Army All-American game, linebacker. He looks to, to be ready, but I think the linebacking core at Michigan State is, is so deep that they can kind of put him off to the side. You know, Tyreek Thompson came in last year. He couldn't even crack the lineup. Now I think Tyreek will be in the top two. Brandon Randall will come. He'll get a shot. But I think it, he'll probably end up redshirting. But, man, this kid is already built like, a, uh, like a, an NFL linebacker. Now, Sam, not as many Michigan prospects in Jim Harbaugh's class. So they did tap the Cast Tech pipeline, mm -hmm. and they're also looking at some other guys. So uh, give us the breakdown there. Well, uh, Big Mike on Winyu here from uh, Cast Tech. You're talking about a guy that's 6'3", 367 pounds. I call him a phone booth guy because uh, two can go in. One's coming out, and it's, it's Mike on Winyu. He is a pile-driving uh, big offensive guard, but he has mobility, and that's the thing that you, you you look at when you see him. He's not a sloppy guy. He's not a stick in the mud. He can bend at the waist. Uh, just the guy that plays with great leverage, power, and speed. Uh, but for alignment, and then when you look at other impact guys, though, because he is a guy that could potentially you don't see this much with offensive linemen, but could potentially see the field. A couple of guys Michigan still looking at in state. I know Lavert Hill, mm -hmm. also Quinn Nordine, the kicker out of Rockford. They're still pursuing these guys, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Vert Hill is an interesting one. His brother Delano uh, is is a guy that's going to start for Michigan and started for uh, much of the season last year. And uh, you know, I think I think those family ties are really tugging at him. I think Michigan's feeling pretty good about that one uh, at the end of the day. Don't his best friends is having I, 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 in the early enrollment I, in Michigan I, I hear that, but, but blood is thicker than water. Just want to stay and then, together. And, but blood is thicker than water. And then so you move one on with Quinn Nordine. Quinn Nordine, you have a guy who is the number one kicker in the country. You know, he had the whole sleepover with Harbaugh thing. Uh, I think that was enough to lock it down. Well, and it wouldn't be a Michigan-Michigan State segment without a little bit of trash talk. I'm sure Rico has some opinions on Jim Harbaugh's adventures on Instagram and sleepovers. But we are graced once again. Paul made it to the show again this year, Rico. He did. He, you know, he pays property taxes in East Lansing. The grace of God Sam, I'll, <laughs> made that what? happen. I'll let you see it. It's the, but the, I'm gonna, the I'm, luckiest occurrence ever. I'm going to take it back from you in 10 <laughs> seconds. So go ahead. <laughs> The final hey, you know, it, enjoy it, enjoy it, because it, it took that. it took an act of God to get it done. Or how about I told this? you, I told you, in Jimmy's first year, you better get him in his first year. You aren't going to get him. Harbaugh is taking recruiting to a whole nother level. In mm -hmm. all seriousness, like the satellite camps, I actually thought were a brilliant idea. You know, go out there and search the comp the country, kick the tires, do what you got to do. The sleepover things a little creepy. Climbing <laughs> trees probably wouldn't do it. But hey, hey. if it works for him. If Michigan, if Michigan has working. become that desperate that they got to resort to gimmicks, <laughs> then do your gimmicks. Uh, hey, man, it's, it's, you can't, you don't, you don't contrive things like taking off your shirt and climbing trees when you're, fi when you're 50 crazy. years old. That's just, yeah. that's just natural sort of being out there a little bit. But, but see, here's the thing. You, you, everything that Jim Harbaugh touches turns to gold. And so you see how, how the season ended for, for Michigan with a blowout of Florida. That's momentum in, into the next season. Did anybody watch that game? Yeah. You know what? I guess I'm a little bit of a snob. I mean, I only, I, you, I only watch you Power should. Six games in high. You so should. Oh, Power Six you games, should. I mean, there's, day six, there's no I evidence that Michigan it. State was even in the game. Oh, did that game against Alabama? Really? Yeah. Did that, that even happen? <laughs> Semi-final. What, what, what proof is there? Did, did there were 80, the there were 80 teams. The 80 teams in the country played in bowl games. 79, 79 of them scored. And you know what? You 80, know who didn't? 80 teams. You know who didn't? Michigan State. But you know what, Sam? <laughs> I'm just 80 saying. teams played just, in bowl games. Four made it to the final four. So, so you, you know who did? Uh, 
Uh, you know so, who did? So getting there, getting there is good enough for Michigan State is what you're saying. They were there. Michigan know that the Big Ten Championship game is I, in yeah, Indiana. Yeah, they absolutely they know. We're it's a, that's a dubious yeah. distinction. I'm so tired. I that's a, that's a dubious this distinction. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. One's a Rolls Royce. One's the price of 300. Now, I need a prediction from each side in terms of what you think from this class, whether it's where Michigan or Michigan State did especially well, what you're looking forward to coming up for 2016. Rico, we'll begin with you. Uh, the wide receivers. I think Michigan State, in losing so many receivers, that's who I'm looking at, uh, Donnie Corley specifically, to step in there and be an impact guy. All right, Sam, what are you thinking on Michigan's side? You know, I think for Michigan, the big key, getting some receiver help, because you are going to have a couple of receivers graduating after this year. I think they really wanted some more on-field dynamism. They're accomplishing that with this recruiting class. And then, obviously, I mean, the biggest fish in the pond. That guy is a super key guy. I, I don't, I can't think of a consensus number one recruit in the country that has been landed by a Big Ten team. Maybe they landed the number one player by one service or another, but Rashawn Gary is a game changer. That is a big deal at the end of the day. And then, like I said, linebacker, the linebacker position, uh, recruiting that Michigan, uh, I think fortified that position in this uh, recruiting class. I thought that went well. We'll uh, come back after this commercial break with more from the State Champs Signing Day Special.